Welcome everyone. Today we're going to talk about this project, two living pods on a residential site in a Canberra, in a city area. Mm. And the clients wanted two homes for two families, their daughter's family and them. And then when they're older, they want to move into the smaller home. And then um, I have, have their daughters or family or other people live in the bigger home. So it's just two homes. Also, seconds bricks. This is um, passive house designed to a high level. Um, this air tightness on this house was 0.25 air changes per hour at 50 pascals. The passive house standard is 0.6 air changes. Uh, a typical house in Australia is 15 air changes per hour. This is very, very airtight and efficient. And um, this was the existing site. The old residents sat very low on the site and mm. wasn't able to be reclaimed. Some of the bricks were reused. So this site had some groundwater. We kept the old garage and reworked, purposed it to a garden room. And then there's an existing site plus water harvesting trenching. So mm. this site has around it a series of water harvesting trenches to pick up all the roof water. We have an option of transporting grey water into it. So in our inner city sites, we have put grey water into the water harvesting system rather than in the black water or sewer system. But it requires the owners to use particular products and not use um, chemicals that damage the soil. So an owner then has a choice to turn a valve on to run grey water into the water harvesting system in the ground where it's treated biologically or turning the grey water into the sewer system. And then, well, going back to the site, the site was flat. It was also had a dip, so it was waterlogged. The existing house had rot in the floor structure. The existing house had asbestos. It was from about the 1950s, so it was about 65, 70 years old. It had single glazed timber windows that were rotten. It had been empty for about 10 years. It had no insulation. So there is a movement now to uh, refurbish buildings rather than demolish. In this case, it was not thought to be viable, but we did reuse some of the brick and the timber was recycled. But um, it was 70 years old and very, very difficult to make it work energy, energy efficiently. So the clients chose to have it demolished. But there's always an option to do both. We mm. could have taken this residence and then extended it or changed and built around it. There's different ways in case the client wanted to start from scratch. Mm. There's times when we will recommend to the client that we don't demolish. And then mm. in a setting of a natural biomimicry landscape, that could grow food and create canopy and a solar passive house and a passive house. Two completely different things because the site, there's north. It's a difficult site to do solar passive on, but we did. And then passive house is basically a very efficient thermal envelope with mm. low uh, air exchange, heat recovery ventilation. These are triple glazed windows from Germany which of course is embodied carbon and energy because we bring the windows all the way over. So there's embodied carbon in the creation and then there's lower energy in operation over life. And north is up the pace. So we needed north facing walls within 15 degrees of north. Otherwise the effectiveness drops off. The ideal orientation of a solar passive wall is within plus or minus 15 degrees. As you get away from that, the effectiveness drops off. And see here, this, this angle is very close to 15 degrees. So we've got north facing here coming into a study, north facing light coming into living areas. Uh, this doesn't get north facing sun, it's north facing into a garden. But wow. basically this area here and this area here and this area here and this area here gets solar passive, northern sun in winter. But then on top of that, it's a passive house envelope. And next, this is the site rotated. What we've done here is that we've got a new entry into mm. 
a car space. It's a very mm -hmm. Japanese entry airlock. And then there's a living pod with a room here, the ability to turn that into future bedroom. Then there's a single wet area and uh, study and bedroom and laundry. Then we've got the second living pod here. And then the entire site is water harvested. These um, elements here pick up water from the gutters, which are open. And these gutters here feed the water tanks, which is a requirement of local authorities. And um, feeds the red lines, which is the trench system. So the final photo is this has only been finished three years ago and um, it's been planted out. This is a dry creek bed, only just starting to blossom. Uh, mm -hmm. And then you can see here the, the gutters uh, cut mm -hmm. back, feed into, so these are basically dry creek beds. And when it rains a lot, they fill up with water. It, they present as little creeks and then gradually the water drops down. There's a lot of connection between inside and out.